all hashtag heathen here and I'm coming at you with another makeup video. I don't, I don't know what that was, but I felt like doing it. <laughs> at any rate, I'm super excited for this one. I'm super excited for all of them, but this one in, oh, in particular is going to be on the Mira Beauty Company's Beijing Baddie Palette. It's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to be playing with the reds in here. That's the red outfit. I figured I'd color coordinate. <laughs> but, um, so the online description, it is a bundle. So we have three palettes in their Bloodline collection. There's the Beijing Baddie, the Bombay Baby, and the Cole Weezy Queen. And they're really cool because they're modeled after uh, the places that the owners are from. So basically, the entire bundle comes with three of our iconic Bloodline palettes. Each is a 12 pan palette inspired by the rich colors, culture, diaspora, and bloodlines of three members of our team. And uh, I did put a note in here a diaspora is basically a scattered population whose origin lies in a different geometric place than where they live. Um, and they go on to say, all of the colors are na and names are a reflection of our upbringings and each of these palettes is a love letter to all of the children of the diaspora and the motherland. Every shade in these palettes is ultra pigmented and formulated for rich, vibrant payoff on all skin tones. And this one, the Beijing Baddie, has four soft mattes, six buttery shimmers, and two pressed glitters, which I'm gonna be playing with today because I like pressed glitters. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't, probably like 99% of the beauty community hates pressed glitters, but I like them. I'm weird like that. As the palette is described online, Beijing Baddie is a 12-pan palette inspired by the rich colors, culture, diaspora, and bloodline of our Mira team member JC's Chinese heritage. All of the colors and names are a reflection of JC's, JC's sorry, Chinese American upbringing, and this palette is our love letter to all of the children of the Chinese diaspora. And basically what I'll do in this video is the same as for the Bombay Baby video. So I'm going to go over each shade name, and sometimes I have added information, um, just a little like, what? I can't think of words. <laughs> just a little like added information on each shade in some cases, and uh, I'll be putting up like examples of all the, uh, the shades. And also, if I'm spacey uh, or look kind of flushed. Um, we'll do a little like life update here. So I am on a medication that helps with uh, like muscle spasms, stuff like that. And I've been on it for years. It has always been covered by my insurance with like maybe a dollar copay. Like it was fine. And when I went to get the prescription like a week and a half ago, um, the pharmacist was like, oh, are you aware of the copay on that? And I'm like, what copay? Thinking it was like $3, like that's the max, three or $4 is like the max that I pay for covered prescriptions. And she's like, it's $99 for a one month supply. I'm like, yeah, no, we, I can't do that. <laughs> So, uh, I then, this was on a Thursday night, which was really cool because medical places in general are just swamped on Mondays and Fridays. And Friday is the first time I was able to call them and inform them that my insurance wasn't covering this. Also, I don't pick up meds super early. Like this one, I probably could have gone a few days earlier to get, but I wait until I have like a couple days left 
um, just because there can be some like restrictions as far as like when you can get things filled, yada yada. And so I only had two days left, which meant I had Friday and part of Sunday or part of Saturday. And yeah, ran out on the weekend because they couldn't get back to me on Friday. I have a similar medication that I like swapped in for it and they call on Monday and they're okay with sending over like the prescription for the, um, the medication that insurance will cover that they suggested in place of it, but uh, it's a medication you get dependent on. And dependency is basically where you will have physical withdrawal symptoms if you stop the medication. So even though I'm on the substitute and it's in the same family, it does the same things, uh, it's still different. So my body's like, mm, no, we're not going to do this. So uh, one of the symptoms of withdrawal is sweating like I wanted to wear my hair down for this because you can't see the red as much when it's up um, and I had it down for like a minute after I washed it and my neck was just like so sweaty <laughs> which is probably really gross so yeah sorry but yeah, uh, unfortunately it also gives me brain fog, or as autocorrect on my phone likes to say, brain dog. <laughs> and I have a really hard time coming up with words sometimes. So yeah, it's gonna be fun editing this. Have fun editing me. But the withdrawal symptoms are gonna last for like a month, so I didn't want to wait until I was 100% to record. I want to um, get these reviews out and such, so yeah, that's why today's drink of choice is a, an electrolyte mix, <laughs> because I am so dehydrated. But we're, we're trying to avoid hospitalization levels of dehydration, <laughs> so I'm just glad I found a, it's called Ultima, I think, uh, I'll throw up a a picture of it but it's a, a sugar-free drink that has stevia as its sweetener I can't have like sucralose or xylitol or anything like that because I'll get just like it'll really screw up my guts and I'll get a migraine so I was happy to find that the stevia ones don't do that because, I mean, the last thing you want when you're dehydrated is diarrhea, so, like, that's kind of what I'm trying to treat here. But yeah, um, so if you're in, in the market for a sugar-free, uh, I'll throw a couple links in the description because you can get a, what we did anyways, is we got like a variety pack and I found my favorite flavor and then just got a tub of that flavor then. So I have like, it's a raspberry, some sort of raspberry. But it's really good. Tastes good. Um, it works for hydration, so. <laughs> Thumbs up. 10 out of 10, would recommend. So if I'm spacey, uh, that's why. I'm gonna try and cut out like a lot of the brain fog moments where I can. <laughs> We will get through this. The last one I recorded took me like an hour and a half, I think, to record. It was either like an hour and a half or two hours or hour 45. I don't know, somewhere in there. Luckily, I got it down to an hour. But, oh, the struggle is real. So yeah, I feel like crap. But that is it with the life update. Let's get into the makeup. So, swatches. Okay, so first we have Bloodline. Then we have Lotus. Then we have Pear. I mean, it's light. It's so vibrant, though. And we have 
long. That was like kind of a bad swatch. I think my arm is still a little bit wet. And we have lychee. Royal flush. Oh my god, the shimmers. I mean, look at those. Ignore the imprint on my arm. <laughs> we have envelope. Really pigmented. May. And last row we have New Year. And we have Dragon. Oh, look at that. And we have Ming. God, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. I can't take it. And then lastly, we have a little bit of the pressed glitter, which is Dynasty, the second pressed glitter. Yeah, there is the whole palette. Oh, these shimmers. <laughs> they're so shim shimmery. Oh, they're amazing. <laughs> All right, that's, uh, that's it for smashing. So yeah, bye. Let's get back to the video. I am going to start with my eyes. So um, actually, I am going to start in with hydration and primer before I do my eyes. My band of the day is the 1975. It's really good. Um, I watch Abby Williamson on YouTube and she does like song recommendations at the end of her videos and this was one of the bands that she featured and I love it. It's like indie rock, I think. I don't know, I'm really bad at describing genres, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, first going in with hydration, it's the e.l.f. Super Hydrate uh, with Squalene. This sits really nicely under makeup and my skin is dry. On the perimeter, it's really dry because it's winter in Wisconsin and that's just how my skin do, apparently. But yeah, this absorbs really quickly and it just leaves my skin nice and hydrated in prep for makeup. For primer today, I'm going in with Maybelline's Master Prime, and this one is the Blur and Illuminate, or 200. I'm trying to go with more hydrating primers. We'll see. I haven't used this one in a long time. You probably don't want to know how long I've had this. But yeah, it I remember it definitely illuminates. Okay, I'm gonna let that kind of sink in, do its thing. For eye primer, I'm going in with Ulta Beauty's Matte Eye Primer in the shade Nude. I think it's the only shade you can get it in, which is kind of a shame. Make sure to get some underneath and also a little extra in the corner. Not sure if it helps, but I do have leaky eyelids. Okay, so first I'm going to go in with lychee. Which is this kind of like peachish color shade, pinky peach. No, I do need a floofier, floofier brush. The pigment is going on really well and it's blending also very well. 
Not that I'm shocked, it was a dream working with Bombay Baby. So, I knew this one was going to knock my socks off as well. I have like a little scar here, so if it looks patchy, that's what that is. It's definitely not the shadows. Next, I'm going to go in with envelope here. And I should also get started on the information. So, the first shade is Bloodline, and it's a ruby red pressed glitter. And it's inspired by the blood of our ancestors, as precious and as valuable as ruby. I love that they did shadow names that reflect their heritage because looking into, like doing the research for this, it was really cool to kind of learn about itsy bitsy parts of these cultures. You know, I wouldn't, it's stuff that I wouldn't honestly have looked into. Actually, I'm going to take this all over the lid so that when I use the glitter, it kind of has a reddened background. And then go back on the fluffy brush with lychee and just try to make sure the edges are blended. like that blending this does not lose the pigment very much at all. It stays pretty true to color even when blended out. I almost forgot about the other eye. And again, fluffy brush. Lychee and blend. The next shade in the palette is Lotus, which is described online as a glimmering light pink shimmer shade inspired by the beautiful baby pink shade at the base of Lotus flower petals. And looking it up, the Lotus has a lot of importance uh, from Buddhism. It is one of the eight precious things in Buddhism. The Lotus is said to bloom in Beijing on lunar April 8th, which is the Buddha's birthday, and lunar January 8th is Lotus Day. And in Buddhism, the Lotus symbolizes one who comes out of mire but is not sullied, inwardly empty, outwardly upright, purity, and then fruit, flower, and the stalk of the lotus symbolizes past, present, and future, respectively. The next shade is Pear, which is a bright pastel yellow matte shade. It's inspired by the delicious Asian pears that JC's mom would peel for her kids every night after dinner. And I've actually had Asian pears. I'm going to take the fluffy brush and go into lychee and carry it underneath the eye. But in high school, I was involved in FFA. Uh, for those who don't know, because a lot of people probably don't, um, <laughs> that is a, like an agricultural club for kids to be in. It used to stand for Future Farmers of America, uh, but they changed that because like, they offer more in the club than just that. Uh, it's kind of like 4-H. I don't know if they have that around the country or in other countries, but it's similar to that. Just less crafty, I think. I 
like I think there are craft things you can get into but I mostly did public speaking and I was in the FFA band in the state band and the jazz band so that was fun we uh, played every year at the state fair during that oh it was so much fun <laughs> But um, one of the things that we would do every year was a fundraiser and it was selling fruit. And Asian pears were one of the types of fruit that you could order and get a pallet of or a box of. And uh, yeah, they were, they were really, really good. They were crisper than the typical pears that you get. They're not quite as soft, they're not as prone to like becoming really soft, and I actually really liked that. We had a pear tree growing up. We had a pear tree, a plum tree, and at our even older house we had a cherry tree. So, oh and apple trees. We have those too. I'm going to take a flatter uh, brush with like a rounded tip. And I'm going to take envelope, but it's just going to be kind of by the lash line underneath. And the fluffy brush with nothing additional on it. I'm just going to kind of go over that blend it a bit and hit myself in the eye because that's apparently what I do every time. Uh, the next shade in the palette is Lung. I did look up how to say these and again I'm going to issue a blanket. I'm sorry <laughs> if I say the words wrong but I kind of tried to put like a phonetic spelling and I think it's long. Uh, but it is a deep lapis blue matte shade inspired by JC's baby blanket with embroideries of this exact color specially made back home. I thought that was really cool. It reminded me of my own blanket that I had. I had one that was like teddy bears, but I carried mostly uh, a pillow and it was just... I don't even know why mom made it, but it had my name and address and phone number on it. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know if she, like, did that in case I, get, like, lost it. I don't know. Or maybe if I got lost, I could be returned. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was just, it was a pillow with that on it, and I carried it everywhere. <laughs> Like, full name on it, too. Uh, just, like, middle initial, but full name, address, telephone number. <laughs> and that's apparently what I kind of, like, glommed onto as a kid and just... <laughs> I have to wait for the freaking loud-ass car with loud-ass music. Okay. But yeah, like as I said, I, I like glammed onto that as a kid and that's what I had to uh, had to have with me all the time. It went everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Uh, and I think, because I used to be a really big uh, thumb sucker <laughs> as a kid, and I used to suck my thumb but I'd be like hanging onto the blanket and then I would have this finger wrapped around my nose. Um, still, to this day, I don't suck my thumb, that's not where this is going, uh, but to this day, if I'm like lost in thought, I'll sometimes be like pushing my nose down <laughs> and all of a sudden Greg will look at me and be like, <laughs> I don't even realize I'm doing it, but he always catches me. Uh, for lip balm, I'm going in with Catrice. It is the Powerful 5 lip balm in Raspberry Cream. This is so amazing. It's 
It does have some uh, tint to it, but not much. Uh, and they do have various, uh, I almost said flavors. <laughs> they have various colors. It's not flavored. I'm going to take another flat like shader brush and take some of the Holy Grail NYX Glitter Primer. I wish my eyelids weren't so wrinkly, for real. And I am first going to go in with, I think, Royal Flush. Or not, actually, no, I'll go on the outside with New Year, then we'll do Royal Flush, then we'll do the glitter. <laughs> it's gonna be kind of complicated. Yeah, I think that looks nice on top of the red. And this one I'm gonna keep mostly in the outer corner. Oh, the shimmer just, I'm glad the camera picks it up. Okay, and then on the flip side of the brush, I am taking Royal Flush. And we are going to basically do the rest of the lid. Oh, look at that shine. Nice. And I'm just kind of tapping where those meet. Let's kind of get a blend. I'm mostly tapping to put it on as well. I have so many wrinkles. I just want to make sure it's covered. <laughs> They're crinkly, as uh, Smoky Glow would say. Okay, I am going to do the same thing on the other eye, and then I'll be back. Now, where do I want to put the glitter? I'm just taking more... Oh, I got it on my eyelashes. That is not where I meant to get the glitter primer. <laughs> and I'm taking Bloodline, which is the red pressed glitter. I'm just adding that to the outside. That went down farther than I expected, but this is why I do my eyes first. Going to take my prized rougher brush, it's the number three, just a pencil brush, and I'm going to take Lotus and use that on my inner corner. That's really pretty. Uh, the next shade is Lychee, and that is a bright peach red matte shade inspired by the delicious and sugary lychee sodas available at every Asian market. And basically it's a non-alcoholic drink made with lychee, sugar, water, and carbonated water. 
So lychee is a fruit that grows in summer and the drink is a common thirst quencher. And it looks good, it sounds good. <laughs> I've actually never had anything lychee flavored. So it'd be interesting to try. So the next shade is interesting and it is Royal Flush, which is a sparkling red shimmer shade inspired by the red hued glow that many Asians get when we drink. Are we right? And uh, yeah, that is a condition that is genetically linked to Asians that when they drink, they kind of get a flush in their face and, and neck and like chest region. Um, actually, Markiplier gets that way and doesn't drink because of it. <laughs> so interestingly enough, someone who has the alcohol flushing reaction may be less prone to alcoholism. And disulfiram, a drug sometimes given as a treatment for alcoholism, works by inhibiting a chemical called acetaldehyde dehydro dehydrogenase. <laughs> dehydrogenous dehydrogenase I don't know it's a chemical uh, and it causes a five to tenfold increase in the concentration of that chemical in the body the resulting irritating flushing reaction tends to discourage affected individuals from drinking the most obvious symptom is the flushing on the person's face and body and other effects include nausea, headache, and general physical discomfort. I think that part of it is why Mark Plyer doesn't drink, but don't quote me on that because uh, I'm obviously not in the loop. <laughs> and many cases of alcohol-induced respiratory reactions, which involve rhinitis, which is um, infection in the nose, and worsening of asthma, develop within 1 to 60 minutes of drinking alcohol and are due to the same causes as the flush reactions. Interesting. So, um, yeah, it is experienced by people of East Asian descent. Oh, you can appear- so, to measure the level of the flush reaction to alcohol, the most accurate method is to determine the level of acetaldehyde- acetal- Dehyde, yeah, acetaldehyde, I don't know how to say that, in the bloodstream. This can be measured through a breathalyzer test or a blood test. Additionally, measuring the amount of alcohol metabolizing enzymes or alcohol dehydrogenases and aldehyde dehydrogenase through genetic testing can predict the amount of the reaction that one would have. I know 23andMe does check for that. Uh, I do not have any East Asian descent, so I, I, I did not trigger whether or not I get flushed. And more crude measurements can be made through measuring the amount of redness in the face of the individual after consuming alcohol. Computer and phone applications can be used to standardize this measurement. So that's interesting. That was very interesting. I actually learned about this when um, Greg and I did the whole 23andMe uh, thing and uh, like I didn't know that this was a common trait for East Asian people. Uh, the next shade is Envelope, uh, which I use today. It is a true red matte shade inspired by every Chinese kid's favorite holiday tradition, the red envelopes. Cha-ching! Uh, so looking this one up, I found that uh, at Lunar New Year, it's tradition to give red envelopes, or what is called hongbao, to friends and family. These envelopes are filled with money to symbolize good wishes and luck for the upcoming year. The importance of hongbao isn't the cash, but the envelope itself, and its red color symbolizes good luck and prosperity in Chinese and other East Asian cultures. I thought that was a really interesting tradition. Alright, to start the face off, I'm going in with ColourPop's Pretty Fresh Foundation in the shade Fair 20N.
shake on it. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Just like right on the eyeshadow. Smooth moves, man. Hashtag not a guru. Uh, for a concealer, I am going in with Colourpop's Pretty Fresh in Fair 20N. And for powder, I'm going to go in with the Maybelline Fit Me powder. I'm going in with the NYX Highlight and Contour Pro Palette. So the next shade was really meaningful. <laughs> I mean, they all are, but this one called May is a buttery blue-green shimmer shade inspired by one of the world's best mothers and the queen herself, JC's mom, May. I thought that was really sweet. The next shade is New Year, and it is a dark red shimmer shade inspired by the beautiful red decor of the New Year festivals that bring the entire community together in celebration. Uh, so Lunar New Year is the beginning of a calendar year whose months are moon cycles, and it's based on the lunar calendar or the lunisolar calendar. Lunar New Year is particularly celebrated in East Asia influenced by the Chinese New Year and the Chinese calendar. It is also a feature of the Hindu Buddhist calendars of South and Southeast Asia, the Islamic calendar, and the Jewish calendar. So it's really interesting. So for bronzer, I'm going in with the e.l.f. Primer Infuse Bronzer in Perpetually Tan. Just add a little bit of color. So I'm not quite as ghostly. 
So 2021 is the year of the ox and it starts at February 12th of 2021, which is Chinese Lunar New Year Day. And it lasts until January 31st of 2022. And it will be, it says a metal ox year. So the recent zodiac years of the ox sign are 1961, 1973, 1985, 1997, 2009, 2021, and it will happen again in 2033. I just looked it up because they had a nifty little find your zodiac sign. I am a tiger. Wow. So my lucky numbers are one, three, and four, and lucky colors are blue, gray, white, and orange. Oh yeah. Apparently my luck in 2021, so these are based on five stars, I will have four out of five stars for work. Um, for those who don't know, I'm disabled, <laughs> so I don't think I'll be working. Wealth is three out of five stars. Love is four out of five stars. And health, I get three out of five stars. <laughs> We'll see about that. I think the work and the health ones are a little uh, above where it's going to end up being. So the Ox's personality, they're known for diligence, dependability, strength, and determination. Uh, women Oxes are traditional faithful wives who attach great importance to their children's education. And for male oxes, they are strongly patriotic, have ideals and ambitions for life, and attach importance to family and work. And it says oxes are weakest in their communication skills. They are not good at communicating with others and even think it is not worthwhile to exchange ideas with others. They are stubborn and stick to their own ways. Interesting. The next shade in the palette is Dragon. And it is a blinding yellow gold shimmer shade, and it's inspired by JC's Chinese name, a symbol of true strength and fortune. And the Chinese dragon, also known as Long or Lung, is a legendary creature in Chinese mythology, Chinese folklore, and Chinese culture at large. Chinese dragons have many animal-like forms, such as turtles and fish but are most commonly depicted as snake-like with four legs. Uh, for blush, I'm going in with Bare Minerals. What do you say you are? It just says Bare Minerals Blush in Rouge. It is a loose blush. I don't always like working with it, but I thought it might go okay with the look today. That might have been too much. Bit much. This is why, like, for me, working with a loose blush is not such a good idea. <laughs> For highlighter, I am going in with the Wet n Wild, it's the Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in Purple Ashes. It is limited edition, so I'm not sure if you can still get it. I got the Goth, uh, Gothomatic? Magic? Goth... Gotho... Gothographic. I got it. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get there eventually. I got that on Amazon for a pretty good deal. So maybe look there. <laughs> you can maybe get it. I'm not entirely sure. It's a very shimmery like, pink color. Root 
soft nose time. Shiny nose. Yay. Yeah, I picked this highlighter. It's very good. Very happy with that purchase. The next shade in the palette is Ming. And it, if the camera would stop moving, my feet hit it. It is a true black shimmer shade. Inspired by Ming himself, the king of tough love, but the embodiment of altruism and the American dream. And this one I did have to message Mira on because I wasn't sure who Ming was, but it is uh, JC's father. So uh, they have a shade named one for their mom and one for their dad, and I think that's really cool. And the last shade in the palette is the second uh, pressed glitter. And it is a layer gold pressed glitter shade inspired by the generations of Chinese immigrants who have sacrificed everything they know and love so their children can have all of the world's opportunities. The population of Chinese immigrants in the U.S. has grown nearly sevenfold since 1980, reaching almost 2.5 million in 2018, or 5.5% of the overall foreign-born population. Whereas in 1980, Chinese immigrants did not appear among the 10 largest foreign-born groups in the U.S., China in 2018 replaced Mexico as the top sending country. After immigrants from Mexico and India, the Chinese represented the third largest group in the U.S. foreign-born population of nearly 45 million in 2018. Chinese immigration has a long and fraught history. Uh, throughout the first half of the 19th century, Chinese manual laborers, predominantly men, migrated to the West Coast, where they found employment in agriculture, mining, railroad construction, and other low-skilled jobs. In response to negative public sentiments and organized labor lobbying, Congress in 1882 passed the Chinese Exclusion Act, which was the first act or first legislation aimed at excluding certain foreigners based on their origin. Uh, it's so wrong. <laughs> it's so very wrong. I'm I'm very glad that they are experiencing a better story. I really wish it was better in this country for immigrants. Uh, I don't, I don't get the hate. That is the entire palette. I'm going to throw on mascara and figure out a lip thing. I lied. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go in with the NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray. Why are you stuttering? Okay, hopefully that helps with the stuttering. For mascara, I'm going to go in with Physician's Formula, and this is Lash Mixologist. And it has one end for length and one end for volume. And I go in with the length end first, and then go in with the volume. Oh yeah, I got glitter glue on that lash. I don't know if I got it, but... A black there but you can't really tell. <laughs> That's good. to go with uh, its elf matte lip color in the color wine.
Yeah. I like that. I think for brows, I'm gonna keep it simple today. I don't know why I, well, I forget about them a lot of the time. <laughs> but I'm going to go in with NYX Tinted Brow Mascara and just put some of that in there. I don't know. I'm bad at brows. For reals. <laughs> For realsies. But yeah, that was the entire palette for Beijing Baddie. Um, just a reminder, they are going to be doing a restock in March sometime. They will be available then for purchase. But if you do want them, I would definitely follow their Twitter. That is where they kind of keep up to date on things. and as you know when it gets closer they'll be tweeting about it and yeah if you want to get your hands on it the whole set is 70 uh, otherwise I believe they're 25 a piece so that's the second of the palette I'm really really happy with the performance I mean it's just pretty <laughs> I'm very very happy with that the mattes are easily blendable, they work well together even on layering, and the glitter obviously is, I mean, look at that. <laughs> the shimmers too, I mean that inner shimmer is just so vibrant, and the inner corner highlight. It's very cool. But yeah, I recommend them. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, uh, if you could go down, please, and hit the like button. That way I know uh, how these are, are doing. And hit the subscribe button if you're new here. If you are new here, welcome. Sorry I didn't do that at the beginning of the video. <laughs> That's probably the place to welcome people. Again, need a script or something. And yeah, turn on the bell for notifications. If you do that, YouTube might notify you. Maybe. If it feels like it. If it's raining. I don't, I don't know what metric they use. <laughs> but sometimes you don't get notifications. But yeah, check back here regularly. I will be doing the third and final palette, which is the Colweezy Queen. So that will be next. All right. Well, y'all have a good night. And uh, remember, life can be shit. So let's get through it together. Keep hanging in there with hashtag. Bye. Oh, I need my spatula of focus. But we have audio. We have video. We have uh, focus. <laughs> this is my first time wearing nails with little doodaddies on them. And this one is a star. It'll focus there. In Tennessee, it has a point up here. Gets caught on everything. It's really fun. <laughs> they are like the super cheap ones, so I don't know if the ones that are a little bit more expensive are better, but I don't know. You would think I would have like a set routine by now. Like I've been making um, videos on here for two years now. I mean, granted, I've only been doing makeup stuff for a couple of months, but I still don't have everything, like, down pat. <laughs> I swear I need to, like, write everything down and be like, this is what you need to do. Okay. 
guy needs a muffler or something. So loud. Where's my phone? It is a true med, a true med rat shade. <laughs> kind of. I was like, what the hell comes next? Like I said, I don't have all of this down pat. So yeah, so, um, so, so yeah, so, um, so. <laughs> Bitch say so one more time. <laughs> I notice, usually I don't notice it while I'm saying these things, but I notice it in editing. And I'll be like, oh my god, try to cut out all the ums and the ands and what have you. <laughs> oh shit, there's a fucking earthquake. wasn't me farting, that was the chair. 